Glad to know you're still there. It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And uh, it's time for Off the Press. And our analyst, whom I told you, will be joining us is here. Chris Kendewando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is joining us here in Lagos on Off the Press. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Let's hit the ground running, shall we? And begin with the Guardian newspaper. And it leads me to Nubu's reforms face stress tests amid labor threats, FX scarcity. Uh, you have a picture of um, the president there. Uh, page six is where details of that can be found. Uh, palliatives, government silent, four days to eight week deadline for talks. Details of that is on page four. But let's start with these two, first of all. Palliatives, government silent, four days uh, to eight-week deadline for talks. And then Tinubu's reform. Tinubu's reform face stress tests amid labor threats, FS scarcity. Chris, things are not looking good at all. And it's, it's become really difficult to do of the press of, the press of late. Every day we hear and see these horrible headlines reflecting the true situation on ground. And so it becomes really difficult to handle these topics. But let's go ahead and continue to talk. Labor has threatened that they'll go on strike without any warning to government if the price of fuel should go up even for one minute. Let's talk about this. Well, not only, as you rightly said, it's a quite... Uh, Annoying and uh, depressing for us to come here on a daily basis, someone like me, on a daily basis and other situations to be analyzing the situation. I'm very, very frustrated. That's a piece of Sometimes you just don't feel like talking again because it seems that you're just talking to some human beings that already use tools to close their ears and they're not ready to listen and excited to play. So when you see people like us, the television, so you let them why we do what we do, and that has been the situation. But we cannot stop. Uh, we we are journalists. Ours is uh, is to be able to look at issue uh, passionately and be able to convey the feelings of Nigerians, millions and millions of them who have who don't have voice to be able to do that to the authorities and not just to the authorities, but the global world. Uh, so there's a say in my place, uh, the chicken that was carried by a hawk said that it's shouting and crying. It doesn't mean that uh, because that you know that the hawk that has clicked is going to drop it there just for the world to hear that hear the voice uh, that uh, is being taken away. And that is the situation of things uh, Coming back to the question you asked, yes, labor have threatened. But I don't even, even the labor that was supposed to be uh, for the masses, I don't think they are no longer for the masses because three times now they threaten to go on strike. They, they might say they are going on protest. It seems that labor has been caged. And personally, I just feel that they have been compromised. That's my personal opinion, irrespective of what the labor leaders are trying to say or do. Because if they are not compromised, this is not the kind of labor that Michael Lumudu uh, uh, bequeathed to Nigeria. This is not the kind of labor that. Uh, uh, Hazan Sumonu was the president. This is not the labor that even Adam Oshomole was the president. It was the same labor that Adam Oshomole rose on through the back to go into politics. And then he was widely accepted uh, in, in a dual state. He became the time governor of a dual state, uh, became chairman of the National Party today. He's a senator. And you look at the set of uh, uh, labor leaders that we have today, ask yourself, where do we drop the ball? So, Irrespective of whatever they are, they are, I believe that they are just the same, same, they are part of government. But the fact remains that whether we like it or not, the price of oil is increasing. Uh, people, uh, it, most of the filling stations I know are outside adjusting. If you look at what happened in Lagos yesterday, uh, I know you must have seen the queue returning and panic by. And that is what it is. The right, Naira is out of the assault today. The Naira is floating between 9.45 and 9.50. Hmm. And you ask yourself, how did you get there? Look uh, at what yeah. was the situation pre, yes, pre pre 29th May, and see what what we have. Less than 63 days, we have turned around totally. We said that um, Buhari's government was worse and has no uh, economic sense. I don't know what to talk about. Present government, we were told that he will repeat what he what he did in Lagos. Uh, 
Is this what President Lubu did in Lagos? So Nigerians have just been left in their fates. And the situation is just like things fall apart. Uh, things are falling apart and the center cannot. And to even make it worse, the fact remains that this is a president that the Senate have passed his pre uh, ministerial nominees for close to a week, over a week. Now. He has not even sit down to assign portfolios. He's running a one-man government. Some of these issues can be handled by his ministers and is the uh, ease of government. But he is not even doing that. Rather, what they are interested in is going to Niger. Uh, uh, medley in the, Niger, you have you are carrying an elephant on your head and you are using your feet to look for uh, for cockroach. And that is the situation of Nigeria. And we don't even know what to do. Yesterday, he met with central. The president met with central bank. Central bank. Um, governor, uh, the uh, governor. governor, the CBN, yeah. Yes, CBN governor. I heard what the one was saying. So that one doesn't even know what he's talking about. Uh, where the clearly we are going to uh, deal with people. We are going to do this. Ventilation. We are going to. Uh, at the end of it, nothing. Not you. You just see this one is just blowing, uh, blowing air. It's just blowing air. No solution to the problem. Is it beginning now, to look like the, this uh, Naira float policy was not carefully thought out ab initio? Or is it that didn't Nigerians are not being one? patient didn't enough? Didn't, didn't, didn't you say it uh, from day one? That is not just rushing and just making pronouncements. A government that comes to what you do first is through a holistic... It's just like a, 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 sick, a, a sick person comes to the hospital. The doctor don't just say, give him Panadol. Keep it fancy. Keep it. They will ask you to run a test. If you say, man, or if you say I'm having malaria, and you go to a hospital, a doctor that knows that will not treat you based on the fact you say that I have malaria. He will ask you, what, what if you say you have a I'm being a big patient. A very, very intelligent will say, go and run a lab test. It's based on that lab test that the doctor will not start diagnosing. Oh, is it a malaria? Because at time, what you are calling, what you what you see as a layman as malaria could be typhoid. You know, so oh, it's typhoid. Is this? Is that? But this one that came, this president came. He started by it on the one. He was told not to talk about the issue of removal subsidy because subsidy has been paid for the next one month. He came. He says subsidy is gone, and the problem started. And since then, nothing. Everything that you see that what they are just doing is. Economic magumago, just a trial and error. Not what we call Obioma, Obioma Tellery. That is what this government is doing. There is no economic direction that is got. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it's rather unfortunate. When you talk, they say you just try to be a pity. Give them time. Give them time. How many times do you want to? Let me tell you, Mary, if pre, pre 20, uh, 29, uh, May 29, you have 1 million naira in your bank account, by this valuation now, yeah, that million naira has been due to about 400,000 naira. Mm -hmm. And companies are living in truth. Look at Gla Glasgow Smith. My goodness, when I read that, that, when I read about that. The that for 51 years has just left. And nobody's saying anything. When I read about that, Chris, my heart sank. I thought, oh my God. But I wasn't so surprised. But then it was shocking and painful to see companies. Well, you be surprised. In a country that energy, the energy sector is not being looked into. We are talking about important. Nobody is talking about reviving the, the, the refineries. This we have gone as far as they have gone as far as even putting tax, but on diesel, diesel. Those are the critical products that manufacturing companies use as energy sources. They are even putting that on that. There you are talking of petroleum. Everybody is talking. They are talking about importation, importation. No, market for market. Nobody, nobody within this government knows that. He said the uh, the potato refinery will start working by December. Till now, nobody is telling us how that process is going through. Kaduna, nobody is talking about Kaduna. Nobody is talking about worry. What we are just looking at, talking about petroleum, petro um, importation of petroleum, importation of a meeting. This same government set up a committee with uh, and, uh, the labor union to look at ways of palliative arrangement. Till now, that committee has not been meeting. The chief of staff to the president is the chairman of that committee, and the NLC have come to say that for one day we have not met. And the president promised make a, 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 a broadcast to the uh, to the people a few weeks ago, rolling out all sorts of palliative. See now, not a single of that uh, palliative measure have been put in place. And you continue to ask yourself, what is really going on? That is a what question. What is, what is really, really going on? Now, uh, marketers are saying that they would have to stop importing fuel. Because 
Well, as it stands, the refineries are not working. If we have to see fuel to use, marketers will have to keep importing. And they're saying if, as long as the Naira continues to drop with the way it's going, they can no longer import. And they're calling on the government to do something to stop this free fall of the Naira. How can they do, how can they do something? What I, what, what, is it simple? I'm not, I'm not an economist. In fact, in my first attempt at uh, school, I had F9 in mathematics. So <laughs> when it comes to mathematics, <laughs> I had f so When it comes to <laughs> mathematics, I won't tell you that. That was why I generally went to read <laughs> journalism. <laughs> then only to come back later to read law. But the part remains that it's a simple thing. A, company, a, a country that is import dependent cannot have enough dollars. To be able to execute it because that is just it. It's just because we are going to be importing, you're importing close to 99% of what you need. It's not possible. Other countries are exporting. It's only when you export that you get you you, you make money currency. Yeah. Not, not, not only dollars, pounds, yen, uh, name it, whichever one the currency that is. That is how it is done. But if you you are import dependent, then but how do, are you even going to be import dependent when your power sector is not functioning? Because whatever it is going to, we are going to manufacture here. If it is expensive, very expensive, then you cannot export. You cannot compete in the international market. Mm -hmm. Rather, you people would rather prefer, now people prefer to import things from China because of its cheap labor. We import everything for China. We import. Uh, in fact, the fact remains that if you import slippers from China and you compare it to the one at Ariara market being manufactured at Ariara market, it's far cheaper. So what are we talking about? So those are the issues. So that the fundamentals. It doesn't take any sky rocket scientists, uh, economists to know this. There are basic things that we need to put in place. But the fact is that first and foremost, we need to fix the power sector. We need to fix the uh, petroleum mm -hmm. sector. What's we able to do? We can export. The president said he said they saved um, one trillion naira within the first thirty days. I've just told you how much we've lost within the, uh, uh, the first, they tell us how much we lost also in the first. Uh, what is why you have to say, you say, definitely I am sure that we have lost more than three times, four times of that. So it's, it's as good as not saving anything. Even the, what you say you have said, what is the impact in the life of Nigerians? None. So I think that this government should really get, it, it is just not, it's not rhetoric. That was how where it came, promise seven and eight on, in, in 2015. And Nigerians, based on those promises, voted for him. And at the end of it, he came out to be a disaster. The worst, one of the worst presidents we ever had in the history of Nigeria. I hope that Tinubu is not going to go down that lane. Well, Nigerians face more hardship as transport fares jump by 100.6%. That's another headline there, still on the Guardian newspaper. All of these tied together. I was coming to work this morning, just as you alluded yesterday, the queues. This morning, the queues is still fine. Even the NNPC stations are shut down, no fuel. The surprising thing to me is that despite the increase, and that's why that's I say that Nigerians are one of the most resilient people in the world. I've never seen any species like Nigerians. <laughs> despite the fact that it, you know, if they increase it to 1,000, you see people still going to queue. And they, some people say, oh, what alternative do you have? Some other countries, just a low for increase in the life in, in the low for price of loss for bread brings down government. We have resigned ourselves, and that is why I've always said that our problem in Nigeria is also part of religion, is religion. Where will they give people false hope? Oh, all will be well. Uh, pray to God. Everybody that and they use that to be able to cage us. And the fact remains that how can you, a country that produces crude oil, are now having to depend on importation. It is not done. Our Naira, SEFA is much, much stronger than our Naira. We are moving towards the Zimbabwe situation. God have where mercy. You have a, yes, the Zimbabwe situation is where we are running into. You know, that we used to hear that uh, 1,000 uh, 1, um, um, Zimbabwe um, dollars to one, uh, $1. Is it not 1,000 Naira now? Mm. To, one dollar. It's the same thing we are moving into. Nobody's talking about the same situation that has happened in Venezuela and the rest of. No, I, I, I remember and, asking that question some weeks back. I said, I hope we're not approaching that. We're not going to get there. It's and, 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 it is the fact. That is where we are. That is how much is a loaf of bread. 
It used to be 1,000. It has moved away from 1,000. Now it's moving to 1,100. Loaf of bread. And you're asking yourself, what is the situation? Then you're talking about transportation. Yes. Because what do you expect them? They have to increase too. Because they, once they increase, there's increase in petrol price. They also have to increase. Don't Somebody worry. came there and said, no, he's reducing in Lagos State. They are reducing the, the transportation uh, by 25%. Um, the, 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 what is it now? BRT. The union is going to, the, the, not only the, even the chairman of the whatever in Lagos State say, oh, we're going to reduce. And the, um, the transporter said, are you the one buying our buses for us? Are you the one pay, paying for our price? They said, I got to reduce the prices at the park and rest of them. Is that enough? The prices are increasing by the day. Most Nigerians don't even use their vehicle. They park it at home. You only go out when it's necessary and enjoy bus. So those are the situation, and I continue to say it quite tremendous that this president just has to hit the ground running. A president that's supposed to have a... We're talking about cutting down cost. Now a president has decided to come up with a 45 member cabinet instead of cutting down is increasing and he's still telling nigerians oh we have to cut down costs does that make sense even the ones that he's choosing he cannot even give them portfolios even the state, around, some state for, governors uh, yeah some state governors are beating him to it some state have you seen the portfolio the list of aides just aides not commissioners that some state governors have come out with what is some I don't, no because if because once the head is rotting the whole body will have because they're supposed to take a cue. If the president has shown leadership, his appointment, then no governor will have the right. In as much as we are operating a system where um, we, we have the governor, we have the state independent of this. But when you look at the president and somebody should look at what you have at the cabinet, then you can come down and say, okay, no, no problem. Let's look. But a situation where the president, who is the head of state, is increasing his number of aides, increasing his number of advisors, increasing his number of ministers, in this crucial time, they, what do you expect the government? They told the line of the president, and that is what is happening. Okay, let, let's move to the nation newspaper, and it's leading with Forex crisis. CBN likely to flood market with dollar. Uh, the writers there, Tinubu OK's Apex Bank's plans to stabilize currency volatility and how to strengthen Naira by experts and CBN hammers to... Okay... How much to fall on speculators? Yes, this, this was part of what he said yesterday. It's not so clear, not so legible. But that's it. The, the, that meeting that took place between the CBN and the president yesterday, uh, the acting governor for Lashodun, uh, Shonubi, uh, yesterday. So forex crisis, yeah, CBN yeah. likely to flood market with dollar. Where is he getting dollar from? Where is he getting the dollar from that is flooding the market? They continue to deceive themselves. Where is he getting the dollar from? Let me tell you everything about Nigeria now. Right. People are withdrawing their money and buying dollars and not keeping in the banks. That is what is also happening. If you have 10 million naira, somebody will probably just go and buy the dollar because if somebody, the wise ones, if they have bought, when the dollar was just about less, about 500, 329 May, if you decide to use your 10 million naira to buy dollar and keep in the bank, that money, if that's, you know the, how it will be appreciated by close to about 40% or 50% by now. So, and that is what is happening. So the, the, the everything has been dollar. Even when they go to the fact, what are they sharing? What are the uh, what are the governors sharing? Corruption is creeping back. Into the, have you have you? Do you creeping know that? Back? Did I, you go I, to anywhere before? That. Nobody has ever talked about corruption within this government since the president took office. I've never seen him say anything about corruption. He never. I've never. If I may be wrong. I need to be corrected. But everything happened within the system. It still boils down to corruption. Something is going on that we are not aware of. And the fact that somebody is telling me that you go to, do you just go to outside and go and pick dollars? And I've said it is that you have to be productive. It is in the cost of export that you are going to earn dollars. That is simple mathematics. We don't manufacture, we don't print dollars in Nigeria. So when you say we are going to flood the market, where are you going to get the dollar? Do you print dollars? You don't print dollars now. Dollars is an international currency. I say, you want to flood the market with fake dollars, which is not possible. Mm -hmm. So, well, so the CBN uh, acting governor, the acting governor is saying he does not believe that it is the market uh, forces that have caused the scarcity of the forex, but speculators, and that he's going to shock them in a few days' time that they're going to lose. Congratulations to him. That is how they told us that they're going to shock us. That the problem with forex 
uh, Nigeria was Aboki FX speculation. Have you forgotten that it was Aboki FX speculation that was causing the rise in the cost of dollar? And for that, that platform was shut down. What happened? Did they stop dollars from this way? They know what to do. They're just deceiving us. And if they don't know what to do, then they have ship out so that we get people that can be able to do the job. We have millions and millions of Nigerians that can do this job. It's not that we are like, this, are, this is Nigeria. This is a country where Nigerians go out and go and see the uh, deputy head of uh, treasury or the secretary of treasury in the Uni United States, what we call the minister of finance, deputy uh, vice minister. He's a Nigerian. Go and check it out. Go to other countries. We have Nigerians that are doing very, very well in all this sector. But the fact is that we cannot put the right, we won't put the right people at the same time. It is always a party, party people. People put knows next to nothing about what they are doing. And that what has gotten us, instead of him to be telling us, giving us policies, telling the president the right thing to do, he's talking of going to likely, I would like CBN to likely flood market dollar. How? Where? Where is he getting it from? Okay, Most just because, this, okay, so, so because of time, uh, let's see what else we can talk about. U.S presses ECOWAS to pile more pressure on Niger Junta and um, the riders no to Bazoom trial and Akinyemi endorses actions. Uh, we're still on the Nation newspaper. U.S. presses ECOWAS to pile more pressure on Niger Junta. How well, do you see all this uh, unfolding in that axis? Well, why the, the Junta said that they're open to uh, negotiation with ECOWAS. It seems that they are trying to consolidate themselves. What they have come at yesterday is that they have enough reason to try the former, the deposed president uh, for treason, including that he has been contacting foreign uh, leaders and the rest of them. But the fact that I thought, I still believe that we have the ECOWAS led by our president, uh, Bola Tinubu, did the wrong thing by, the, by issuing a seven day deadline to that junta. There are more diplomatic ways of going about that. After you've exhausted, you can only do that after you've exhausted those diplomatic channels. And that is the problem they're having now. They are not doing what they're supposed to have done first. Now they are trying to do it again. The, the fact remains that the junta in Niger has consolidated. And when you talk about ECOWAS, who is ECOWAS? 80% of funds and um, and all the necessary uh, instruments of ECOWAS are going to use to prosecute certain um, a decision in the call be provided by Nigeria and Nigerians have come out overwhelmingly to say no we are not interested we are not interested in what everybody is saying that oh but let's see what that negotiation will be able to do US is saying oh we have to do that we US have troops in the Niger Republic what have they done France have troops in the Niger Republic what have they done they will only continue to push the ECOWAS. Uh, but what uh, can countries. they do they are not is, is is it their battle is it is it their business though it is your business. It is our business too. I mean, I'm talking about it U.S. Is, and France. That is what I'm saying. Is it our own business too, Nigeria? Oh, okay. Niger is a, an independent. I'm saying, is it our own business too? Niger is an independent country. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell the country how to rule its people. If they decide to go to uh, to go to and to remove their leader, oh well and good. It is our business. We have our own domestic problem, and that is what everybody is saying. Let us not drive. And it has been seen as a Nigerian Niger thing now. That is Which is a at. very deadly powers. dimension. It's a very that is unhealthy it. dimension. We have 1,600 kilometers of borderline with Niger. The other people that we've been trying to intervene, Syria alone and Liberia, don't have any border with Nigeria. And that is why everybody say, let us be very, very careful. This is not like Liberian war. This is not like Sierra Leonean war. This is a, a war at our own um, like, yeah. uh, borderline. And anything that happens, we filter into Nigeria. Let our leaders be careful. We have enough problem of our own. Okay, so Air Force probes helicopter shut down claim by bandits. It's quite unfortunate what happened yesterday. Investigation is still on, so we cannot jump into conclusion. A uh, lot of people, you know, people, when this kind of speculation comes around, as journalists, we rather wait for proper investigation. But mm. the fact is that that, um, that plane came down yesterday in, uh, uh, in Niger State. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we learned that one of the pilots died in the process. The investigation is on. Um, but let us wait and see the. Uh, oh, for, for the details Niger of that. Part. Mm -hmm. yeah, as that supply us with the investigation before the speculation. Yeah. Well, very sad thing there. Uh, well, thank you so much, Chris. 
is a much time will permit us to take this morning on off the press as usual it's always a delight to have your insight on these issues that are unfolding we keep our fingers crossed and hope that things get better in the next couple because, of days may god save nigeria have a wonderful day you too chris chris kandewando member of the shattered institute of arbitrators in the uk has joined us on Out the Press this morning. He's joined us from Lagos. Do stay with us. We'll be back to give you our first hot topic.